بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو طاہ سی ایس ایس پریپریشن سینٹر ایز ان دی پریویس سیشن وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ مسلم ورلڈ اینڈ کنٹمپریری چیلنجز اینڈ ان ٹو ڈیز سیشن وی ول ڈسکس رائز آف ایکسٹریمزم وی ول کم ٹو نو اباؤٹ لٹرل اینڈ ٹیکنیکل میننگز آف دی ویری ورلڈ جہاد types of jihad and what are the conditions that permit jihad what are the rules and conditions that differentiate between jihad and terrorism history of the word terrorism and then we will know about al qaeda causes and solutions for current spate of terrorism and at the end we will differentiate between fidai and suicide attacks let us start the deep discussion on all these points one by one jihad is an arabic word derived from the root verb jihad linguistically it means the struggle and the struggle takes various forms and is driven by a variety of implications and motivations either spiritual physical or mental a group or individual struggle According to Merriam Webster jihad is a holy war waged on behalf of Islam as a religious duty also a personal struggle in devotion to Islam especially involving spiritual discipline in Islamic terminology jihad means to struggle in the way of Allah for the glorification of Islam with a motive to earn the pleasure of Allah defense of the dear homeland and protecting oneself from the whims and wishes of one's nafs there are many forms of jihad jihad bin nafs to struggle against the desires and wants of the nafs or the baser self and jihad bil mal is to defend islam by spending money in the way of allah for the help of muslims in providing arms and ammunition or fulfilling other requirements jihad bil kalam is to defend islam by writing using one's pen jihad bil qaul to say the right thing and make utmost efforts to stop the vices by pronouncing one's rejection towards such acts jihad bi saf is to fight in the way of allah through sword or modern weapons this very form of jihad is discussed here Jihad is the most revered religious duty on Muslims it may become obligatory in some cases as when the collective conscience of a society turns to recalcitrance and contumacy and when there is no option save to crush and root this tilt and in such circumstances where if steps are not taken to fight and frustrate this forcefully then the whole all world will be deluged by mischief civilizations and cultures would be annihilated and mosques churches and other places of worships would be demolished as said in the holy quran walau la daf'u allah an-nas ba'dahum bi ba'dil lahuddimat sawami'u wa bi'u wa salawat wa masajid yuzkaru fiha ismu allah kathira and had there not been allah's repelling some people by others certainly there would have been demolished monasteries churches synagogues and mosques in which the name of allah is much mentioned wala yansurun allah man yansuru and surely allah will help him who helps his cause inna allah laqawiyun aziz Most surely Allah is strong the mighty jihad was not allowed to muslims in makka but when they migrated to medina and established an islamic state they were permitted to wage a jihad if they fulfilled these three preconditions that are going to jihad collectively in case of aggression and repressiveness on them 
permission of the head of the state jihad should only be meant to glorification of islam and the struggle to build a good society 39 and 40 verses of surah al-hajj explicitly describe these preconditions in the words as udina lil ladina yuqataluna bi annahum zulimu permission to fight has been given to those who are being fought because they were wronged wa inna allah ala nasrihim laqadir and indeed allah is competent to give them victory الذين اخرجوا من ديارهم بغير حق الا ان يقولوا ربنا الله they are those who have been evicted from their homes without rights only because they say our lord is allah these are the initial verses on jihad with saf and in these verses not a single person but the muslims as a group are the addressees Jihad bi saf can be waged only if the head of an Islamic state approves it. Jihad will be legal only under his patronage and it cannot be waged sans his permission. In this context, a hadith from Sahih Bukhari says, Innama al-imamu jannatun yuqatalu min wara'i the imam is a shield behind whom you fight and you protect yourself with it can be safely deduced from this fact that sans an oppression and permission from the head of the state jihad would not be rightfully and legitimate in islamic perspective if a person or a group carries out activities in the name of jihad that would not be actually a jihad but will only be a mischief Allah sends his prophets to the world as established proofs so people will not have an excuse when they will be questioned on the day of judgment the holy prophet muhammad peace be upon him is the last prophet sent to mankind allah sent the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam with a divine covenant as is explicated by the following verses هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا it is he who sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to manifest it over all religions and sufficient is allah as witness in the context of this verse there are three diverse opinion among the interpreters the covenant to manifest islam over all religions was only with the holy prophet peace be upon him and that was fulfilled according to this inter- interpretation jihad is not legitimate except in case of oppression and tyranny this school of thought of interpreters holds the view that after the holy prophet muhammad peace be upon him the jihad would only be lawful if the muslims are oppressed the second group of interpreters opines that allah's promise to make islam the dominant religion was first fulfilled during the life of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and later in the era of the pious caliphate as per the view held by this school of thought jihad is legitimate today only to eliminate the oppression and tyranny the third school of thought believes that allah's promise to manifest islam over all religions will be fulfilled after the second coming of prophet isa alaihi salam this view elaborates that jihad to glorify islam can be resorted to any time and making it mandatory only if there is oppression is not correct all the above mentioned point of view are somehow scholastic but when 
viewed in practical terms there is a precondition that there must not be a no war pact between a muslim and a non muslim state it means that in the presence of such pact according to all schools of thoughts muslims are not allowed to wage war with such a state even for spreading and glorification of islam Islam lays great emphasis on the importance of promises and pacts it is said in the holy quran inna alladhina amanu wa hajaru wa jahadu bi amwalihim wa anfusihim fi sabili llah wal ladina abaw wa nasaru ulaika ba'duhum awliya ba'd indeed those who have believed and emigrated and fought with their wealth and lives in the cause of allah and those who gave shelter and aided they are allies of one and other walladhina amanu wa lam yuhajiru ma lakum min walayatihim min shay'in hatta yuhajiru wa in istansarukum fi ddin wa ali fa alaykum an nasr illa ala qaumin bainakum wa bainahum mithaq but those who believed and did not emigrate for you there is no guardianship of them until they emigrate and if they seek help of you for the religion then you must help accept against a people between yourselves and whom is a treaty wallahu bima ta'maluna basir and allah is seeing of what you do according to the quoted quranic verse jihad would not be rightful even if the muslims are subject to tyranny if there is an agreement or pact between a muslim state and a non muslim state if a muslim state concludes that the muslims are being oppressed then the state must repudiate its treaty with that very state and only then it can help the oppressed muslims all the nations in the contemporary world are parties to treaties in the united nations majority muslim states are also bound to honor those treaties if the muslims feel that one muslim country has been invaded or is being oppressed and they ought to help them then it is inevitable for them to break those treaties there are explicit instructions in the holy quran in this regard wa imma takhafanna min qaumin khiyanatan fanbiz ilayhim ala sawa inna allaha la yuhibbu al khainin if you have reason to fear from a people betrayal throw their treaty back to them putting you on equal terms indeed allah does not like traitors islam lays great emphasis on fulfilling promises and honoring treaties and even during the state of war muslims have to honor them there are numerous instances in the history of muslims when they honored their promises and treaties an example can be sought from the lifetime of the holy prophet peace be upon him when the treaty of hudabia was concluded hazrat abu Jan- dal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reached the muslim camp at hudabia from mecca at a time when the truce was about to be signed his father suhail ibn amr who was the envoy of the quraish in the negotiations for the truce insisted on taking him back to makkah he said o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam we have agreed that if a person comes from makkah to medina then he will be returned so hand back abu jandal to us despite the holy prophet peace be upon him did not wish to return abu jandal he directed him to go back thus honored the treaty jihad is not devoid of conditions or limitations as is the case with the warfare in other religions the limitations on jihad are being narrated here 
where these limitations are violated it would not be jihad but it will be terrorism and this is the difference between jihad and terrorism in jihad the enemy is not taken by storm in this context hazrat ans bin malik narrate that when the holy prophet peace be upon him reached near the enemy he would not attack unless there is morning had dawned whereas in terrorism a terrorist attacks out of the blue the innocent and unaware people who are busy in their work or even when they are worshiping and no person can be set on fire as is said in the hadith of the holy prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam which narrates that driving someone to the torment of fire is not allowed as it is the exclusive right of allah almighty on the other hand the material used in terrorist attacks causes the bodies to char or suffer huge burns in jihad damaging crops destroying agriculture fields and carrying on killings in settlement is not allowed in any case the holy quran says wa idha tawalla sa'a fil ardi liyufsida fiha wa yuhlikal hartha wan nasl wallahu la yuhibbul fasad and when he goes away he strives throughout the land to cause corruption therein and destroy crops and animals and allah does not like corruption and terrorism wreaks havoc everywhere crops people's holdings are snatched and their lives are taken by terrorists during jihad mutilating the dead bodies is strictly prohibited the holy prophet peace be upon him had ordered against the mutilation of bodies and plunder in an act of terrorism many bodies are mutilated Jihad etiquettes do not allow killing the ambassadors envoys and emissaries when an envoy of muslima kazab the arch liar came to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam with his contemptuous letter the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said to him if killing the envoy is not prohibited i would have kill you whereas during the present spat of terrorism many ambassadors and envoys have been killed during jihad a muahid or a non muslim person under the protection of muslim state cannot be killed as unanciated in a hadith of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam whoever kills a man of ahlud dima means non muslims living under islamic rule will not smell the fragrance of paradise even though its fragrance can be discerned from a distance of 40 years whereas in terrorism no one is immune to its wrath jihad is only done in the way of allah to achieve his pleasure the holy quran say وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا Fight in the way of Allah those who fight you but do not transgress. Whereas motives behind terrorism are only personal and vengeance. Jihad can only be launched to make Islam dominant of all religions and glorify it whereas terrorist act are carried for very mean and disdainful purposes jihad is fought to eliminate mischief or fitna as is said in the holy quran wa qatiluhum hatta la takuna fitna fight them until there is no more mischief or fitna terrorism is meant to spread the mischief in jihad children women and the old are not harmed neither the places of worships are damaged whereas on the other hand no one is spared in terrorism 
फर्स्ट पाइस कैलिफ हजरत अबू बकर सिद्दीक रजी अल्लाह तु गेव टेन रूल फॉर द मुस्लिम आर्मी वेन ही सेंट ए मिलिट्री एक्सपीडिशन टू सीरिया ही सेट नीदर किल ए चाइल्ड नॉर ए वुमेन नॉर एन एज मैन यू मस्ट नॉट म्यूटिलेट डेड बॉडीज यू आर लाइकली टू पास बाय पीपल हु हैव डिवोटेड देयर लाइफ टू मोनास्टिक सर्विसेज लीव दैम अलॉन bring no harm to the trees nor burn them with the fire especially those which are fruitful property must not be damaged slay or kill not any of the enemy's flock save for your food do not commit treachery or deviate from the right path and the properties and lives of the people who yield must be protected as those of the muslims booty must not be misappropriated do not retreat during jihad in english linguistics terrorism means intense fear according to the webster dictionary terrorism is the use of violent acts to frighten the people in an area as a way of trying to achieve a political goal whereas oxford dictionary defines terrorism as the unofficial or unauthorized use of violence and intimidation in the pursuit of political aims as far as the matter of a consensus definition is concerned it has never been made the, the international community has never succeeded in developing an accepted comprehensive definition of terrorism The word terrorism comes from the French word terrorisme and originally referred especially to state terrorism as practiced by the French government during the 1793 to 1794 reign of terror. This word terrorist was used by the Christians in Ireland in 1866 to refer to the to the Fenian raids carried out against the Fenian brotherhood who rose in rebellion seeking an end to British rule in Ireland and establishment of an Irish republic. The Jews related to the underworld were termed terrorists during 1930s to 1940s. After the 9/11 incident, the US used this very word for Al-Qaeda. Ayman al-Zahrawi and Sayyid Imam al-Sharif alias Dr. Fazl both studied at the Cairo University they met in the 1970s Sayyid Imam al-Sharif is reported to the ideological founding father of al-Qaeda he wrote Watihat Tarshid al-Amal al-Jihadi fi Misr wal Alam means document of right guidance for jihad activity in Egypt and the world in which he wrote at great length on recruiting the people for jihad and on all the aspects of caliphate Osama bin Laden joined this movement in the 1980s now we are going to discuss causes of scant spat of terrorism wrong perceptions and interpretation of islam huge disparity between haves and have nots system of injustice prevailing at national and international levels unrestricted use of force by the world powers to occupy the resources of other countries vast is a huge spending of money in muslim countries to impose western culture sport of foreign countries to sectarian organizations in pakistan foreign agencies involved in promoting sectarianism checkered history of democracy and intermittent military dictatorial regimes preferring personal goals over national interests terrorism will ebb away if the above mentioned causes of terrorism are eliminated 
the point of difference between fidai or self sacrifice attacks and suicide attacks are discussed here right now fidai attacks or self sacrifice attacks are those where a muslim attacks the enemy in such a way that the death of that muslim is highly likely but chances of survival are also there first condition for a fidai attack is that there must be a war being fought between the muslims and the non muslims the rightful caliph or imam has sent a mission fulfilling all the conditions of islam there too it means that such attacks should not be against a state with which the muslims had concluded a treaty this attack should be on infidels there must be no chances of muslims bearing greater loss than that of the infidels according to the majority of scholars if a fidai attack fulfills all these conditions it is legitimate and allowed whereas suicide attack is an attack in such a way that there are no chances of attackers survival and suicide attacks are absolutely forbidden in islam suicide attacks are not launched in an all out war between muslims and non muslims rather they are mostly carried out on such places where muslims have established their rule only the innocent common people become the victims of these suicide attacks despite the fact that they have nothing to do with the enemy or the infidels and they do not support them in suicide attacks children women and the old may also lose their lives while they cannot be killed even if there is a jihad islam puts the condition for jihad that lives of people must not be taken by storm but in suicide attacks most casualties are of those people who are totally unaware that they are going to be attacked Islam forbids suicide and considers it a great sin. A hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari narrates that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said, "He who commits suicide by throttling shall keep on throttling himself in the hell fire." While the Holy Quran also says, "Min ajli dalik," because of that. كتبنا على بني اسرائيل انه من قتل نفسا بغير نفس او فساد في الارض فكانما قتل الناس جميعا we decreed upon the children of israel that whoever kills a soul unless for a soul or for corruption in the land it is as if he had slain mankind entirely one can appreciate the inviolability of human life in islam by realizing that the act of killing of a human has been equated with slaughtering the entire human race since islam does not allow the unjust killing of any individual how can it possibly tolerate suicide attacks bomb blasts murders and revolt against the authority of the state that is charged with granting the safety and security of its citizens Renowned religious scholar the head of the Tanzimul Madaris of Pakistan and the principal Jamia Naimia Alama Dr Sarfraz Naimi gave a verdict against suicide attacks while he was assassinated in Lahore on June 2009 besides him many other renowned religious scholars have fallen prey to this heinous act that is totally forbidden in Islam as far as the court one man's terrorist and other man's freedom fighter is concerned explicates that everyone has his own understanding of the religion but the question arises here that how an understanding that kills innocent and impotent people and that gives a damn to unlawful murder and which affects 
and spread the mischief on earth can be accepted. The current spat of terrorism and terrorist acts had mild Muslims of the whole world generally and in Pakistan particularly in a country Common populace is the ultimate loser in all senses. Among them are those who kill and also those who are being killed. Those killed are Muslims and so do the killers claim. The current state of affairs is that West is out to invade Muslims with their culture and civilizations and enforce it upon them, but the Muslims are disunited and fragmented. This is the point where Muslims have to think that where they are heading and carve out strategies to make the real face of Islam dominant. As Molana Altaf Hussein Hali had referred to this very situation when he said, A khasa e khasaan e rusul wakt e dua hai, ummat pe teri aake ajab wakt pada hai. And another poet says, Koi or to nahi hai pas khanjar e azmai, hum hi katal ho rahe hai, hum hi katal kar rahe hai. No one else is thrusting the sword, we are being killed, we are the killers.